हाय गुड मॉर्निंग एवरीवन गुड मॉर्निंग संवित गुड मॉर्निंग एवरीवन या सो माय आई एम संवित माय नेम इज जस्ट होल्ड ऑन आई थिंक आई जॉइन फ्रॉम अनदर आईडी सो दैट पीपल रिमेंबर माय नेम you you joined in factonity or something wo tabhi kuch softwares karte the isme ye usme kya use karta ke mit ko गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन दिस इज समित आई विल बी द प्रेजेंटर इन टू डेज वेबिनार ऑन मशीन कैपेबिलिटी एंड प्रोसेस कैपेबिलिटी क्विक इंट्रोडक्शन फॉर पीपल हु डोंट डोंट नो मी एंड अवर ऑर्गेनाइजेशन येट एंड देन वी विल take you through a session on on machine capability and process capability and then followed by question and answer session uh, so one ground rule uh, keep yourself muted uh, because there are many people joining in this session and whenever you feel like asking a question you can unmute yourself ask the question and mute yourself back so that we avoid any uh, background noise okay so this is samvit i am the founder of geometric uh, software Uh, we primarily deal with manufacturing sector companies and uh, uh, build software for paperless manufacturing manufacturing digitization with a focus on quality related uh, softwares okay so i i'll start with a quick presentation and then we will move on to the uh, demonstration using the software and how we can do those calculations and a little bit of concept statistical concept behind uh, machine capability and process capability I hope people can see my uh, screen. Yes, visible. Okay, okay. So uh, basically, Zometric is a suite of solutions for paperless factories and smart supply chain. We deal with solutions around quality, real-time statistical process control, data science and statistics, and other things that you can think uh, see in the uh, uh, in the in the presentation. right so today's focus is on industry 4.0 ready solution for in process quality uh, we have solutions for incoming in process outgoing quality so today's focus is on in process quality uh, and uh, for that there are lot of lot of things that we need to do and specifically we will focus on uh, machine capability and process capability today okay so in terms of tools you can see a lot of tools that that are listed here uh, uh not everything is listed but couple of tools that you can think of is listed here some some of us are familiar with minitab as of now people people are using minitab are you familiar with minitab yes i used it for long time ago yeah 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 so it is similar to minitab it is little more uh, user friendly than minitab as a solution uh but minitab is a offline statistical software where you have to bring in your data zometric has built a solution which is ha which has the capability of minitab in terms of statistical analysis and graphical presentation of the statistical analysis however it has multiple modules uh, one of the module is similar to minitab where you bring in your data and do the analysis the other uh, solutions other modules have the ability to capture data from your machines directly or from your soft floor so it's a multi user enterprise kind of a solution where you can capture data from multiple sources the source could be manual data capture it could be automated from machines or it could be semi automatic uh, in terms of gauges that are connected let's say wifi connected gauges or wire connected gauges so we can capture data from there directly okay uh, uh, there are couple of things here i will skip through a little bit about background about us Zometric is the name of our product. Our company's name is Factonity Systems Private Limited. We deal with uh, many ty type of statistical software, data science, as well as 
industry 4.0 solutions right about me background about me my name is samvit i am the founder of zometric uh, i am a graduate from iit kharagpur with 10 plus years of experience in manufacturing and 5 plus years of experience in uh, technology and startup domain so i started my career with asok leyland and michelin tire in france so automotive is something that's that's one of my favorite area and then i have moved on to other uh, fmcg and uh, service sector kind of industries and uh, Amazon, I, I, I kind of was heading the process excellence uh, for India uh, in Amazon and then in OYO uh, for India and Southeast Asia. I have kind of been instrumental in building a lot of technology for uh, OYO and uh, Geometric is my own startup. I also have uh, Swajit along with me in this session who is a co-founder uh, who takes care of sales and marketing. I take care of technology uh, implementation, customer success and consulting. Okay. Uh, in terms of expertise, we have manufacturing quality, operation, supply chain. So these are the kind of expertise that we have. Right. So I'll not go into a lot more into, uh, we have a lot more about the software. I'll jump into uh, Yeah, uh, so hope you're able to see my screen. Yes. Yeah, so this is Zometric software. Okay, uh, we have multiple modules in the software, but today's focus will be on the statistical analysis module and a little bit on the real time SPC module. Okay, so if I go to the statistical analysis module, you will see uh, this is a browser based solution. So basically, once I log in, uh, I can see a lot of these kind of tools. Uh, Unlike in Minitab or any other statistical tool where you, you know you have to go to the top menu and drop down, uh, all the tools are listed in one single page here. Okay, there are shortcuts available as well. I can go to the shortcuts and I can uh, get my tools. But uh, in this module, I can also look for what I need. Like for example, in graphical analysis, I have uh, multiple tools. In control charts, I have multiple tools. Today's focus will be on machine capability and process uh, process capability. Right. So I will select that or if I want to quickly uh, access it, I can probably just write it machine. It will take me to the machine capability. It is highlighting here. I came to the machine capability. OK, so now just uh, unmute yourself to ask when, when I ask some questions, you can answer yourself. What is your understanding of machine capability? It is the ability to deliver uh, in probably um, uh, as per the normal curve within the sigma levels. Mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah, so it defines the ability of the machine to deliver the required upper and lower limit. Yeah, good definition. So uh, we want to access the capability of a machine to deliver to the specification. Okay, uh, how capable is the machine to deliver or meet my specification requirements? Okay. Then what is the difference between machine capability and process capability? Why two different terms? Anybody so please unmute yourself and answer. Yeah. To understand whether my product can be uh, made in that particular machine uh, for understanding purpose that machine capability is uh, done, I hope. OK. And what is the difference between a machine and a process? The process, process. Okay, sorry. Uh, process capability probably made might combine a uh, few machines. Mm. So it's a process uh, capability will be a, maybe a combination of machines. That's why. So mm. process capability will be different than the machine capability. That's not my understanding. But no, this is not the correct understanding. But it's a good attempt. Okay. okay. What okay. other variabilities? You good thing is you introduced that there is something more in process than in the machine. That is a correct direction. Uh, but uh, process capability is also specific to a machine. If you have five machines that are manufacturing a particular part, process capability also needs to be done machine by machine. Correct. Okay. It's it's not uh, you can combine uh, two different machines or three different machines for process capability. There is something else that comes into play in process which is not there in the machine. Anybody would like to take a guess what it is? Yeah. 
in machine there is only machine can play a role right there are the man material method exactly machine. exactly yes this is the perfect answer so man material machine method a lot of variability a lot of these are the parameters which are different introduces different kind of variability uh, or instability into the process okay the sources of instability in the process are machine process which is man man uh, or a man or people uh, uh, the material batch to batch variation in the material and if the method is not being followed correctly right so these are the different kind of things that you can have uh, as a uh, as a variability okay have you heard about long term and short term capability there is a lot of mis there is a lot of confusion about what is long term and short term so i'd like to clarify uh, by but opening the discussion the yes. machine it can come in in the short term and in the process it is coming in the long term right and yeah. even process capability people sometimes say this is long term capability this is short term capability no it is not because process it is a process itself machine itself it is coming in the process so it is uh, not a practical answer right all. so basically over a period of time uh, what do you say local or tribe tribe knowledge you can say right people said it is long term capability and short term capability so they categorized something as long term something as short term that is not the case when we learn about the difference about cp and pp cpk and ppk we will understand that in little more details the there are standards there are defined standards i i will open this standard the name of the standard is iso 225143 this is the international standard okay that talks about machine capability okay so this is the machine capability standard and it defines how the calculations need to be done what is the uh, condition that we need to ensure to ensure that we are doing the machine performance study it is also not called machine capability the real term is machine performance study but common word used in the industry is machine capability study that's okay completely uh, okay to call it machine capability or machine performance studies so this is the first step before you go to process capability we need to do machine capability all of us must have heard about apqp some of us must have heard at least in the automotive sector yeah advanced yeah. advanced planning and quality right so machine capability comes at a stage when you are introducing a new product when you are introducing a new part or production before the production actually happens at the engineering level or at the design level we need to be we need to first make sure that we will be able to meet the requirement of the customers the stand you know customer or internal customer or external customer that is up to us whether we are able to meet the specification so the first step is doing the machine capability study in machine capability study we try to eliminate other variabilities okay when i talk about variability there are multiple variabilities variability due to machine variability due to manpower variability due to material so in when we are doing machine capability study we need to take good enough sample size what is that good enough sample size it is 125 okay minimum around 100 if if it is too costly a process but the uh, the approximate number that is acceptable is 125 and more the more the better <laughs> but we collect 125 samples the certain conditions the conditions are all this 125 or 100 should be manufactured without stopping the machine you have to start the machine start manufacturing those 100 parts and take those 100 or 125 samples in one continuous run continuously without break okay but when we go to process capability we don't do that we take samples in subgroups or individuals over a period of time okay over a period of time all of us must have or most of us must have heard about imr chart and xbrr chart people have heard about imr chart and xbrr chart spc concept individual moving range and uh, uh, x bar and r chart i don't get no answers yes, so i will yes, assume yes yes samvit yes yes, we, yes. We, we practiced yes okay so mm -hmm. both x bar chart and imr chart is not for machine capability it is for a process okay machine capability does not work on subgroup because the entire 125 sample is one subgroup 
okay one because your subgroup means you have to collect sample in a very short span of time that is subgroup and you are collecting all these samples in one continuous block right that is one subgroup so in machine capability you have to compile all the data in one subgroup okay so i will take some random data i will generate some random data in in uh, um, in geometric i will go to sampling and then i will go to normal uh, data so i op opened up normal uh, distribution data okay so let us say i want to generate 125 data you shouldn't be generating this data in, in your real process but you know since we don't have a machine i'm generating this data here okay so let us say the mean is mean of something that we are manufacturing is 25 and the standard deviation of that process is let's say 0 0.02 okay and i want to analyze this graphically also let's say least count of my process is up to third decimal so i will put three and i will calculate so this generated some data for me okay this generated some data for me in the left data pane and it has analyzed this data for me in terms of a histogram and uh, the normality test okay so this is something you might be familiar with uh, as a graphical summary or something in, in Minitab, it is similar to that, but it has generated the data for me. Okay, so it has taken the standard deviation as 0.02. Uh, it has it is it is fairly normal because my p value is 0.8, and uh, my mean is uh, mean of whatever data we generated is 25.03. Okay, so I I will copy this data. I will copy this data. I will come to my machine capability analysis okay so i will put this I assume that this this was actually measured when something was being manufactured okay so now uh, i have i have to give a lower specification limit and upper specification limit so let's say my target was 25 plus or minus 0. 0.5 okay so what will be my lower specification limit 24.5 okay and upper specification limit let's say 25.5 so i put these values and I want to do a machine capability study here. So I will do so I chart, so MR chart. No X bar R chart here, only I chart in machine capability because we have not collected data in subgroups. We have collected only individual values. Okay, and then there are other information like, you know, uh, let's say it is Tata Motors. Okay, uh, let's say the machine is machine one uh, and some part is Zero, zero, 001 all of those information i can put let's say i'm measuring dia uh, unit of measure is mm so all of those information i can put uh, as and when required okay so i'm putting this let's say i also want to track who is the operator and who is the inspector i can say operator one uh, inspector one and i have used a vernier caliper let's say Let's say I have numbered them. Okay, I am putting some number here. And all that I have to do is hit calculate. So now it generated a report for me. Okay. Now it is saying this is this is a this created histogram for me. Okay. Uh, this is saying lower specification limit is 24.5, upper specification is 25.5, and it has created whether my data is normally distributed or not and it is giving me uh, some statistics here right 125 is the number of samples that we have used and the mean of that is 25.02656 something like that and standard deviation is 0 0.019 something and here are the machine capability parameters a lot of you must have heard about cm cmk or pm pm not pm basically cm cmk okay but the standard says pm and pmk okay i'll show, show that to you So uh, in this 5.7 section, it is saying historically these indices have been recorded as CM and CM uh, lower and CMK upper because no attempt is made to establish statistical control because we have not done any statistical control. We're just checking in the initial stage a machine capability. That is why it is saying no attempt has been made to make establish statistical control. Therefore, it should be better you know we call them as pm and pmk okay so next time when your customer says 
uh, if you're using Geometric, for example, if your customer asks you the question, why you are calling PM, PMK, whereas I'm asking you CM and CMK, you can refer to the standard and say, the standard has modified the traditional CM, CMK into to be called, to be preferably called as PM and PMK, because we are just measuring the performance of the machine. We're not seeing the capability of the machine. We're seeing the performance of the machine. So PM and PMK, okay? So both are equivalent. It is just that it's a preference what we want to use it. So PM and PMK are the values that we are observing. Now PM, PMK seems to be very high here. Usually the target is two and above, right? Two means you are achieving six sigma. So it is eight, it is, it is pretty good here, okay? PM, 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 PMK, and here we are seeing no PPM is expected. Now let us, uh, below this you are seeing the I chart and MR chart and all that. Let us assume that we change this from 24.5 to 24.05, let's say. You know, we have a very narrow tolerance. What are we going to expect? We are going to expect some bit of, uh, uh, you know, this is, the, this is the specification limit, okay? This is the specification, upper specification and lower specification, and these are the control limits. Now we are going to expect the, these lines to come closer, right? So let me recalculate it. Sorry, I did something wrong. Yeah, not 24.05. I think we should make it 25, sorry, 24.95. Yeah. yeah. So now you see we are almost neck to neck. Like, you know, we're generating some bit of defects also here, right? So you, see, you can see from the histogram also. You can see the process cap, the perf machine performance also has come down. It has become now 0.85. Is it good enough? Is PM 0.85 good enough? No. We, our target is close to? Two. Two. Two and, okay. two and above, right? So it is not good enough. But at least you know it is not good enough. Now what happens is, I will tell you a story. There is an aerospace company uh, that kind of was getting into automotive. Okay. Uh, now, aerospace has a high margin, uh, so they basically were able to live with defects because they were able to sort things out. Now, when they wanted to supply to automotive, automotive is a thin margin, you know, highly competitive kind of an environment. Uh, this company is generating defects and they are now putting money into sorting good and bad, okay, and they are not able to do anything. Now, because they agreed to a particular specification, they are incurring losses. So, it is important that when we start manufacturing something or when you're committing to a customer, first we need to understand whether our machine or machine, the machine that we're using, is it even capable to meet the tolerance? Because customer will always want zero tolerance, okay? But sometimes it is not necessary because your customer, the end customer does not bother about a little of little bit of variation here and there, right? So it is always a negotiation. Always look at specifications as negotiations because you, it, it, uh, if, if the tolerance is very tight, Generally, we tend to lose money there unnecessarily and customer is not willing to pay for those, those losses. So it is, we have to define those specifications as a negotiation. This can be used at that level, right? Machine, machine, specific, machine capability. Okay. So now here you are seeing you are expecting some bit of PPM. Some, something as less than lower specification, something you are going to expect uh, more than upper specification. And, but uh, you are not seeing, observing any defect below lower specification. So these are the things that you can use to understand what is the capability that you can commit to your customer. Okay. Below that you will get an I chart and MR chart. All this is based on the standard that we just saw. Okay. Any questions until now? I assume no questions. So uh, yeah, somebody is asking something. Hi, I chart is individual uh, reading. Individual no? chart, yes. And MR chart is the moving range chart. Okay, so you can download this report as a PDF if you're going to use the metric, and then uh, send this report to your customer. Everything is there. What whatever they need is there. Your company name, address, everything is there, right? Your company name, machine, all this information that you need is already there. It saves a lot of time because you don't have to do all the formatting. You can simply say this is what I observed, and this is this is what we can commit. Okay, we can meet the specification. Now coming back, uh, once you have done, uh, gone through the machine capability, the next step is to assess your process capability. When you do uh, a, a PPAP, pre, you know, uh, production part approval, right? Then you go to the uh, uh, SPC and control chart and process capability, right? So there we come back to 
our capability analysis. So uh, there are various ways of doing capability. We will use the capability six pack. You must, have, you must be familiar with this uh, about capability six pack. In this, I will take two examples. One IMR chart, another is an X bar R chart. I'll explain the difference when we need to take X bar and when we need to take uh, IMR chart. So let us say I have some data, sample data. Uh, I, I will take some data for, for X bar R. Okay. So let's say my subgroup size is 5. What does it mean for a subgroup size to be 5? Can anybody explain me what is a subgroup? That means we take 5 samples in uh, at a time in that subgroup. Is that correct? Right. So let's say in one full day, I'm taking 5 samples. Can I consider that as one subgroup? No. Let's, it, let's it say 10 a.m. 1, 11 a.m. 1, like that, no, I'm no, taking 5 no. samples. Okay. No. So okay. this is good answer. Uh, a lot of people have a confusion about X bar R chart and uh, you know IMR chart. When you're collecting samples in a very short span of time, what actually you're doing is you are eliminating the probability of any external variation being introduced between your samples. Okay, so that is one subgroup. The purpose of taking data in subgroup is to understand the difference between within standard deviation and overall standard deviation. Within standard deviation means if within a span of let's say one or two minutes or let's say consecutive five parts, I'm taking taking the samples, I'm taking the measurements, right? In that kind of a scenario, there are the chances of external variability. Variability like, you know, change in the batch, change in the settings, change in environmental factors like temperature, moisture, you know, any, any dust particle in the environment or you know, fluctuation in your pneumatic pressure, fluctuation in your voltage, all these things come down. It is not eliminated, but it can be negligible. Okay. That is why we collect data in subgroups. There is another reason, more statistical reason for collecting data in subgroup when your data is not normally distributed. Then also taking data in subgroups also help. But the primary objective of taking data in subgroups is to ensure that we are collecting data in a period where external variability is not there okay this is the five samples between which we will not try to see a special cause okay and then we will take another subgroup of sample after some period of time right that some period of time can be two hours one hour half an hour 15 minutes depending on your production run you should try to set up a frequency in a, in a way that uh, let's say your average production time of one setting is let's say eight hours right then you might want to see uh, uh, you know uh, some uh, some number of subgroups in in a process right so in that kind of situation you can have more time gap between your process also if your process is stable enough then you can do that so the, the frequency is, is is a very complex area uh, it's it's also a judgment area how you should do it but if you are running a short manufacturing process short process means it's it's about 2 hours or something like that uh, you're doing a short process then in that kind of a scenario you should reduce your uh, uh, frequency reduce your frequency means more uh, reduce your frequency not so increase your frequency increase your frequency means reduce the time interval between subgroups okay so let us say i have collected some samples 20 subgroups i have collected let's say the uh, lower specification limit was 596 and the upper specification was 602 okay uh, and there are other options that I will keep as it is okay and this is capability six pack is common for this tool is common for IMR when I'm collecting only one data at one point of time another sample at another point of time or I'm collecting in subgroup so here you will see options for both and we have kind of set up uh, the uh, Nelson's rule for all of them so I've, I've kept all of them by default as on and then I calculate so when I calculate, I will get an X bar, X bar chart, an R chart, a capability histogram, a normal probability plot, whether my data is normally distributed or not, last 25 uh, subgroups, and also a capability indices uh, table, right? In the capability indices table, I will get CP, CP lower, CP upper, CPK, in the overall, you know, this is the performance metrics, I will see standard deviation overall, PP, PPL, PPU, PPK, 
uh, and CPM. CPM will come if I set the target. Let's say I'm, I'm setting the target as 600, then I will get a CPM value as well. Okay, so I got a CPM value as, as well. Okay, so whether uh, the capability is good enough or not, it's, it's a different question. But as a concept, now we will understand what is the difference between CP and PP, and the difference between CP and CPK, and PP and PPK, and the difference between CPK and PPK. Anybody would like to answer what is the difference between CP and PP? Anybody, please? There is no wrong answer. It's, it's all we are learning, so don't hesitate to answer uh, whatever you know. Do you know the difference between CP and PP? CP is PP. PP probably taking entire uh, subgroups. Mm -hmm. And pro CP is within the sub. Group exactly or, correct uh, answer yeah. very very good answer sometimes people say it is based on short term variability long term variability it is not the case so when i'm having when i'm collecting data in subgroups so basically i am trying to find out this point right in x bar r bar point this point is an average of five values this point is also an average of five points okay and then there is a variability in each of those points so in cp i am calculating standard deviation within. How am I calculating standard deviation within? There are multiple methods of calculating. Uh, pooled standard deviation is the uh, uh, most accepted or the most accurate way of calculating within standard deviation. What is meant by within standard deviation? I am calculating the variability between the, between let's say these five points, right? So I'm calculating variability between these five points. Then I'm calculating variability between these five points and again between these five points. So for each of the subgroup, I'm calculating the variability. Okay, the standard deviation I'm calculating and I'm then pulling them up. So basically, I'm ignoring any kind of variability that is between subgroups. Okay, so each subgroup, let's say, you know, this point actually was out of control. It came here. We collected after some time, right? So within this, there is less variability, but between there is a higher variability. Okay, so always between will be uh, different from with, within okay so overall your overall standard deviation has two components one is within variability and between variability so here when you see two type of standard deviations are there which standard deviation is more overall standard deviation or within standard deviation your overall standard deviation is more right that is because overall standard deviation Good. includes the within as well as between mm. okay so when I'm using my within standard deviation for calculating my process capability, then I get process capability, CPK, CP. Okay, this is CP, capability. This is your performance. This is how we performed. Okay, this is how, this is what was best possible. Okay, if I exclude all the instability, there was an instability here, that is why you're getting a special cause. There was another instability here, you're getting some special cause here. If these special causes were not there, then the best process capability or you know the least standard deviation that was possible was the standard deviation within. But we got this is the overall. So this is your capability, this is your performance. Which do you expect? CP is you're expecting higher or PP you're expecting as higher? PP higher. No, CP will be higher because in mm -hmm. CP, the standard mm -hmm. deviation is in the denominator in the calculation. Okay. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. CP will be always higher than PP. Our target is to bring PP closer to CP. If the difference of CP and PP is more than 20%, right? If it is more than 20%, then you're running an unstable process, unstable process. You need to improve the stability of the process. Okay. You're expecting some difference, but that should not exceed 20%. Okay, if it is less than 20%, it is good. If it is more than 20%, then you are running a highly unstable process. There is a big scope for improvement of the processes. Probably you are tinkering the process too much. Okay, now what is the difference between CP and CPK? I see CP as 0.8, but CPK is much lower. Okay, why that? Let us try to understand from the graph itself. So you're seeing this graph is shifted more towards right, right? This data is shifted more towards the right, more towards the upper specification limit, correct? And it is less towards the lower specification limit, correct? So yes. since this since this is shifted, it is not centered, 
you are getting CPK as the minimum of CP upper and CP lower. Okay, CP, mm -hmm. CP lower means my center is my center of this data is much farther from my lower specification limit, but the center of my data is much closer to the upper specification limit. So I have a less capability in, on the upper side and a higher capability at the lower side. So CPK is the minimum of CPL and CPU. That is why you're getting this value. Similarly, if I calculate using my overall standard deviation, PPL and PPU is what I will get. Again, the minimum of the PPL and PPU is PPK. Okay. So the way to interpret this data is to first look at PPK, okay, and try to center the process so that at least you reach up. <laughs> Okay, PPK will be, become equals to PP, PP when your process is highly centered. Centering is a setting change, right? So it can be done easily. So the first step is first you look at PPK and try to match it with PP. When it gets closer to PP, then the next difficult thing is to try to match PP with CP. The difference between PP and CP is simply because of instability in the process. Your operators are tinkering the process unnecessarily or there is a batch to batch variability or you know some some of those kind of or probably there's a problem in your machine which is let's say some nuts are getting loosened automatically over a period of time and then you have to tighten it or some dust is getting accumulated over a period of time and then you have to clean it periodically so those are the things that you have to identify and then you have to move to cp okay so can anybody answer me what is the first thing that we need to look at in this chart out of CP, CPK, PP, PPK, what is the first thing that we need to look at? Yeah, please answer. Between CP and PP, very close. Yeah. Close to each other. First, we need to look at PPK. PPK, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. First, we look at PPK, bring it closer to PP. Okay, low hanging fruit. Why is it a low hanging fruit? PPK to PP. You have to try to improve yes, the centering the process centering. because all that you need to do is entering the process right mm -hmm. then we need to look at ppk versus sorry pp versus cp mm -hmm. it is a little more difficult problem why is it a little more difficult problem Be because of uh, various external factors external factors we need to identify the sources of instability in the process okay and then when you are able to reduce those special causes you can bring PP to CP. Okay, your target should be whatever is your CP, you should be able to close bring close to this. Beyond this, you probably have to look at CP getting closer to PM. That is the next level of thing. Okay, the first step is bring try to bring PPK closer to PP. Next, try to bring PP closer to CP. The next, try to bring CP closer to PM because if your machine is capable, your process is not capable, something is wrong in your process. Probably there is variability in terms of material or the SOPs are not correct. So those kind of things. I hope this is clear to everybody. Any questions? No, super. Okay. So I try to keep it brief. There is far more elaborate way we can do that. We do that in our uh, you know, uh, when people buy our software or take the training. So do, do, do those kind of explanations. I will demonstrate one more thing here. Until now, what you were seeing is a module where you, I was able to copy and paste my data. But somebody wants to go a step ahead, right? And you want to collect data directly from your soft floor. So we have a module called real-time SPC module. In this, what we can do is we can configure various plants. We can configure different machines, parts, units of measurement, different variable cache specifications, attribute data. So all of those things can be configured. Once you have configured, what you get is get is called a scheme, right? So let's let's assume the configuration has been done. I as an operator want to capture data. Let's say I'm manufacturing something. So I will filter the part that I'm interested in. DNCF 1818 black, let's say is the part. Probably this can be manufactured in multiple machines, right? I will filter the machine that I'm interested in. Out of this, you will see all the parameters. This is all pre-configured, right? You don't have to collect data in an unstructured way in some Excel or paper forms. All of this data is available here, what we need to capture, including the subgroup sizes and everything, okay? So let us say I want to collect data for weight per square meter. This is set as an X bar R chart, right? If I've set my subgroup size as five, I will get on the right side, I will be able, I will get a 
form to capture my data. So I can capture my data either manually or semi-automatically from gauges or automatically if, if we do the integration with your machine, right? So this here, they will see last 30 data points by default, okay, latest 30 data points. Although thousands of data can be recorded in this chart, but I'm just seeing the last 30 data points because that will give me a sense of how pro stable my process is. Right. And I'm able to capture my data. And I, when I submit, I, this data, this graph will get updated right in front of my eyes. And then I can navigate. You see on the top, I can see, you know, the equipment part, variable, my lower specification limit, target, upper specification. Don't need to remember all of this. This is especially good for companies with who are manufacturing complex uh, products. And, you know, there are lots of parts, lots of uh, variabilities that we need to measure. You can see all of this, but typically you don't measure only one variable. You also measure other variable. Let's say I want to navigate to the next variable. So all of them are available here. Let's say I go to the next part, next uh, parameter. So you can see the next parameter here. Okay. And let's say I want to update my data. Let's say 128 is my data point. The last data point was 117, something like that. Uh, and I select who is the operator, who is the inspector, what gauge I used. I put all of that and I submit it so when i submitted it the graph got updated uh, live in front of my eyes right so you don't have to teach a lot to your operators you can start giving them this tool and then they will capture the data what is the advantage of capturing data in this tool because you don't have to collect data manually to do your process capability analysis if you're using this tool somebody like you know 20 different people in your factory are collecting different different data they can collect this data in this software and then you sitting in your office can see the process capability for any period of time, okay? So I see here a lot of analytics. By default, I'm seeing last 500 data points capability, how my process has been performing. Then I can select any period that I'm interested in, okay? So let us say I will select it randomly. Let's say 2022, okay? 2022 to 2024, I'm, I want to uh, analyze all this data. I also have the capability, if it is non-normal, I can transform it into using box cocks and all. I'll keep it as it is, not uh, use them. Uh, and I will do the analysis, okay? So when I did my analysis, I got my capability. I know the time period for which I'm doing this. Uh, I, I got my eye chart. If I want to drill down, I can drill down, right? And I can zoom it back and I can get my MR chart. I get my normal probability whether my data is normally distributed or not and my cp cpk pp ppk and sigma levels if, if somebody is interested and the ppm levels and i can download this report as a pdf if i want uh, to use uh, the capability six pack format i can click on compact display and i will get it in the capability six pack format okay this is the format that most of the oems ask for so you can download this report, saves a lot of time, you know, your people had been collecting the data, you can directly download this, check if your, everything is okay or not okay, and you get your report, your company name, address, everything will be there here, and you can simply send it. Doing this using offline tools means you have to, you know, first generate this, change the name here on the Y axis, change the, uh, you know, put it into some Word document, write all this. You have to remember what your lower specification, upper specification are. Nothing is required here. It saves a lot of time. Any questions until now? Okay. So there are further advanced analytics you can do. For example, you have done some improvement in, in your process, right? So you can compare across two different time period. You can compare across machines. So I'm just selecting randomly time periods. I can compare across machines, but I will keep it to the one single machine here. So when I did an analysis, it did an analysis for me for two different time period. One is a reference period and it's, it's a compare period, right? If I've done some improvement. 
I can see, uh, you know, on the top it has done an analysis for me and it is telling me the process mean did not change significantly looking at the p-value, right? But the process standard deviation changed significantly because my p-value is less than 0 0.05, right? And then below that you can see a graphical comparison of the two different time periods. So there are a lot of capabilities in this, uh, uh, in this software, uh, which can be helpful for anybody wanting to improve their process especially in the process capabilities, you know, Six Sigma, uh, SPC, these are the kind of things that you're interested in. You can also generate summary reports for what happened across the uh, different time period. So those capabilities also exist, right? So dashboards and all those these things are there, will not cover in this, in this session today. I hope our objective of understanding the difference between machine capability and process capability, we are clear now. Sorry, if I don't get any response, I don't know. No, no, it's uh, uh, very clear, uh, Samit. Thank you. Okay. 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 Okay, sir. So, uh, I hope all of you have filled up your forms. If you want access to this software for for your trial, we can uh, generate a trial account for you. Uh, if you have not yet filled up the form, you can fill up this form, uh, and Swajit will reach out to you. Swajit, can you put the uh, link uh, on on chat? Maybe let me look at it. So in the chat, I have uh, I am putting the link. You can see this link. Uh, you can fill up your details, your mobile number, your email ID. Uh, so as it will reach out to you once we have created uh, your account uh, and if you further need any help right then you can reach out to Swajit or uh, to me uh, Swajit will reach out put your put your contact number so that you know your password and everything can be shared uh, and and if you feel that you know this can be beneficial for your organization uh, just let us know we can schedule a little more detailed demonstration specifically for you uh, and uh, we can see how we can help you out on this Thanks everyone for joining this session. Any other questions? Anybody? Let's make it interactive, guys. We have a couple of minutes. We can uh, use it for question uh, answers. Ambit, uh, yeah. I have one question. Yeah. The initial uh, PPT you showed about the uh, geometric or uh, factonity. Yeah. Uh, can you share uh, that PPT with, with me? Or I, I'm I'm connected with you on the WhatsApp also, but any okay. other uh, possible? I have I've sent my email ID as well, so probably can. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay. So, so Ajit, please make a note. Uh, maybe we can. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Hi, Sambit. Hi, hi, Joy. Uh, I have one question. Uh, I okay. I'll start the trial and of the software. Yeah. So, uh, means is it uh, is it something you are is something related to SaaS software which are means commercial product? Yes, it's a commercial SaaS product. Okay, okay. So, how much it cost? Uh, cost cost we can discuss separately. So, Ajit will discuss. It's a uh, uh, public uh, forum. So, uh, oh, okay, I understand. <laughs> yeah. So, Ajit will reach out to you. But it's very uh -huh. affordable, I can tell you. It's much more affordable than the popular softwares that are available in the market. It also comes with a multi-user licensing, which means you don't have to buy single licenses for everybody. Uh, so, uh -huh. for example, you know, uh, softwares like SPSS, JMP, Minitab, all of these require named user license, which means for every individual you need to buy one license. If you go by uh -huh. their, uh, you know, uh, legal terms, right? Uh, this uh -huh. is available as a multi-user, which basically means you don't even have to worry, you can give it to your operators also, right? Mm -hmm. And these softwares are typically very costly. Uh, probably it'll, it costs you, the subscription cost is as much as your operator's salary, right? So mm -hmm. that is not the case. We have tried to make it affordable so that it can be implemented at a large scale. So mm -hmm. it comes with concurrent login, you know, multi-user licensing model. You can buy for, uh, you know, subscription for 
five concurrent licenses one concurrent licenses 10 concurrent licenses mm -hmm. so um, we can do that and and, and uh, just a quick uh, i will show you, uh, let me share my screen again okay 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 so i will have a separate call whatsapp call with you after this session. yeah so in terms of customers you can see uh, you know a lot of these brand names right are trusting us currently mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay uh, okay yeah and and there are some large oems who are kind of recommending it to their uh, mm. suppliers because the mm. currently available mm. alternatives are far more costly and you know mm. uh, they don't have the ability to store data generate reports it takes a lot of time so it it helps mm. these companies to uh, uh, you know uh, uh, help their suppliers manage quality better mm. okay okay Okay. Okay. Thank you, Samit. Uh, I'll have a uh, digital conversation with you after this session. Yeah. Maybe Which company are you from, sir? Joy. Uh, Joy. No, I, I own my own consultancy firm. Okay. Okay. I, I work for Vietnam. Okay. Great. For, great. Great. I work for Jordan. I work for Bangladesh, and I work for some oh, other nice, countries. Nice. Do you have anybody in Bangladesh? Uh, no, I don't have any. Uh, uh, I don't. I don't. Uh, I don't keep anyone in Bangladesh because Bangladesh yeah. situation is not uh, is, is is not really well. Uh, I means pre election and post election violence is there. Yeah, so yeah. So I yeah. stopped. I stopped taking Bangladesh project. Right now, I'm 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 working in Vietnam, okay. and uh, I have I have three four factories over there who are I means of course manufacturing. I'm into garments industry, the okay, garments okay. industry, apparel Correct. industries. We can interact offline, sir. I think uh, yeah, we yeah, have certain yeah. opportunities. Uh -huh. we can. I need that software for me. For, uh, uh, yeah, first. no problem. No problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. 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 Then if, we, okay. if there is a uh, business opportunity, then we can talk. Sure, sir. Sure, sure. Okay. okay. Thank you. Yeah. Anybody else? Any any other questions? No, all good. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, sir. Yes. Any suggestions for next session? What topics should we take up? Any topic that people might be interested, I'm willing to take up. See, uh, you spoke about paperless. Yeah. Uh, so that's that's a, that's a thing which is going to happen in future for Indian manufacturing. Right. Probably you should talk more about paperless. How you sure, can sure. make make the shop floor paperless? Yeah. Right. We should do we'll all have a, yeah. logbooks and handwritten notes and pads. Right, right. So paperless is somewhere in between your industry 4.0 and what we are currently in actually. Correct, correct. Right. <laughs> so first at least make it paperless and then we talk then, about then integrating yeah. machines and all. Correct. So yeah, that's that's a good idea. We can do that, sir. Thank you. Okay. Thank you everyone. Thanks for joining in today. Uh you have so this contact I think you would have reached out personally or if you have my number, uh don't hesitate to send me a WhatsApp message or give me a call if required. Okay, so we're a small company, but we want to do good for uh, a lot of manufacturing uh, community companies. So feel free, consider us as, as, as your friend. There is no request that, yeah. you know, we will get offended with. So uh, please come. And we are also understand it takes time. So if you want to say, take some trial for a couple of days and use it for some time, uh, we are very flexible on that. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.